A bullish call on the uh, rideshare company Uber initiated overnight at J.P. Morgan. Price target now $51. The firm saying Uber occupies leadership in rideshare and food delivery in most parts of the world. It is our call of the day. There's a big, long report, as you see here. I, am, I can't pretend that I've written, read more than a page and a half of it. Josh, you, uh, you like Uber. I do. And if you hated watching Tesla do what it's done, then you're really going to hate Uber when it goes to 51 on very little fundamental difference. I just think that... We're in a moment now where we, we kind of go back and forth, where we say, okay, we hate these companies that are losing money just to grow. And then we say, ah, you know what? Actually, they work. Look at Amazon last night. Look at Tesla last week. We like them again. I think Uber gets caught up in that conversation, both the downside and the upside. I'm in the stock at 30. Um, I don't expect them to be uh, cash flow positive or profitable on any real accounting measure for at least a couple of years. The question is, will the market care if uh, revenue growth continues at the rate it is? I do think that this industry is going to be a duopoly. I think Uber is going to own a big chunk of it. Google will come in and own the other chunk. And we'll see what ends up happening with Lyft. But uh, I want to be in this name because I think uh, a lot of the negatives have already hit the stock. And now there's room for upside as people realize, OK, we hated it, but it wasn't worth hating. There's a lot good to, to, to have happen just, here. Just to support you on this, all right, the, the report does project, for whatever that's worth, that they go cash flow positive on an EBITDA basis next year. You know, will that happen? I don't know. But at least we're talking about something that you can do a traditional valuation on next year. It's not like it's four years out. So um, obviously, you know, the numbers we're talking about, I can't really do anything with it. But but I'll be interested to, to see how this develops with you. Brenda, any thoughts here on Uber? Yeah, we're not involved with Uber, but I would say, you know, we really need to see, in our view, more signs that they're starting to rationalize the business a little bit, get out of some of the, the least profitable parts of the business and really, you know, start rubber needs to hit the road a little bit in terms of um, showing that they really can progress the, towards profitability. The big, the big bet, though, is like they have a 25 percent take rate. They should have a 100 percent take rate like 10 years from now. This should what be do you mean order take rate. What do you mean? That's how much they if, if you pay an Uber driver one hundred dollars. Um, Uber's taking $25. That should be, they should take $100, and they will in an automated driving future. The question is, are people patient enough to stick with the stock? Because that's not going to be a revolution. It's going to be an evolution. Every year, new cars roll off the lot, and drivers are finding the car doing more and more things from them. Everything like keeping them in a lane, um, you know, giving them little shocks when they're, they're getting too close to another car. That is the, 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 the nature of what's going to happen with autonomous driving. It'll be very gradual, and then it'll feel like almost overnight. You, you, if you hold Uber through that, the bet is they will have 100% of the take rate because the mm -hmm. cars will be, mm -hmm. will be software-driven. You're not going to have autonomous driving until at least three years. I agree. I, agree. Oh, I think five. I agree. Look, to me, this is a very low bar here. The stock hasn't done much in the recovery of significance versus where it was in its IPO. So I think the bar, as I said, is very low. All they have to do is continue showing some positive momentum on the fundamentals. I'm not going to play because I think it's stacked against them. For example, where drivers setting their own their own fares. That's an experiment that's going on. The regulatory pressures on them can put them, you know, behind the eight ball again overnight. And those are coming. So people also take notice of what they did in the UK, right? They have major issues with the safety. So I don't think it's that easy longer term, but over the near term, next quarter. So yeah, I, think I do think that's very interesting. You said that there's going to be a duopoly between them and Google. Waymo. I, excuse me, it was Waymo, which is, which is part of their... Waymo is going to come portfolio. along. Waymo is going to come along and rip people's faces off. If that were a standalone business being valued um, the way Uber is, um, Google would be much higher. But because it's tucked within Google as its own business unit, um, it gets thrown into some of these some of the parts analysis by sell side that covers Google. These are people that cover advertising. They don't know anything about autonomous driving. That's the analysts are like people that look at search revenue. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. will be something that comes along. And I do think that Waymo and Uber will be the future of how people get around. If you know young people, you know they have no interest in owning cars. All right, Josh. Thanks.